I recently made a video introducing the idea of common tone chord progressions. And today I thought it might be helpful to show my step-by-step -step process for coming up with these types of progressions. If you haven't seen my video on common tone progressions, give that a watch first as I explain what they're all about. To summarize what common tone progressions are, they are progressions whose adjacent chords share at least one common tone. They can be built from any size of chord, they can be any total length or number of chords, and they can be based in any harmonic scheme, which means that they don't necessarily need to return to a home key or tonal area. So what does that all really mean? Well, let me demonstrate. I'll quickly compose a progression using three notes per chord, five chords total, using only major and minor chords, and one that can be repeated immediately after by returning to the first chord. That means that the last chord has to also share a common tone with the first chord. All right, so I'll pick a starting triad at random. How about B minor? From B minor, I can pick one of these chords that have two shared common tones, or one of these that share just one tone. I could go through and demonstrate each one to you, but I think I'll just pick one. How about E major? From there, I do the same exact thing, looking at common tone chords from E major now. Obviously, returning to B minor would be an option, but I'd rather not repeat any chords. I'll choose this one. So at this point, I want to have two more chords, and remember, I said I wanted the last chord to lead back into the first one, so I have to keep that in mind when choosing the next one. From G major, I could go to any of these chords. Again, I don't have to, but I'll avoid chords that I've used before, so neither of these. I'll go ahead and play each one because I think this is sort of a crucial moment in the progression, and I'll try to explain my decision-making process. Starting at the top, I could go to G minor next. To me, the G minor sounds like it would naturally want to resolve to the D major chord next, which would in fact be a common tone chord with B minor, so that could work. I basically just need to find a chord that will lead back into B minor, so that could be D major. Or it could be F sharp major. There are some other chords like D minor or E flat minor, but I don't think they work as well here. So using G minor as the fourth chord could work, then either going to D major or F sharp major would work for the fifth chord. Let's look at a few more options for chords four and five though. I could go to E minor next. From there, I could go to G sharp minor. Or I could go to G minor. Neither of these really sound all that great to me. It's sort of meandering around the same roots, E major and minor, and then G major and minor. So I'm gonna try something else. What about going to E flat major in chord four? Then to get back to B minor, I could go to G flat major, which of course is the enharmonic equivalent of the dominant of B, so that would work nicely. There are some other chords that would work for chord five, but there's something worth noting here. When you use this process of common tone chord progressions and find yourself going to chords that are non-diatonically related, as is the case with this E flat major chord, I think it's actually harder to get back home quickly, so to speak. To my ears, going to the E flat major chord sounds nice, but it almost means that I need more time and a more slowly evolving progression to make it all sound smooth. There's a reason a lot of the epic chord progressions are variations on the same four chords. It's because each chord is harmonically related to each other chord, and the harmonic distance between any two chords is fairly small. Whereas in this example, going to E flat major signals a big departure from what's expected tonally, which is really what common tone progressions are all about in my opinion. So the limitation that I imposed on myself of having only five chords that then lead back to the beginning almost in a cyclical way means that perhaps I don't want to depart too far harmonically away from B minor. Otherwise, returning suddenly could be a little jarring. So perhaps instead I'll go to the D major chord and then go to an F sharp major and link the ending to the beginning.
Another important point I should make here, I personally never follow a system like this 100% of the time. This common tone methodology is simply a way to connect chords, and it may inspire a series of chords, but it shouldn't be restricting your creativity in any way. I mentioned in my first video on common tones that sometimes the most striking chord in a progression has zero common tones, simply because it stands out from the others. In this particular five chord progression, I actually like this D major chord moving to A major, even though A major shares no common tones with B minor. But as you'll hear, returning to B minor from A major sounds pretty smooth. I could even have the final chord change from one repeat to the next. Here I have the first iteration ending on A major, then on the repeat statement, I end with F sharp major. If I were to expand this further, I might even use this F sharp major chord as a pivot chord to modulate by common tone. F sharp major shares the F sharp and A sharp with D sharp minor, so I'll modulate to D sharp minor, or the enharmonic equivalent to E flat minor, and repeat the progression now in a new key. So let me demonstrate another progression, this time not restricting myself quite as much. I'll aim for mostly three to four note chords based in non-functional tonality. That means major and minor chords, diminished, augmented, suspended chords, extended harmony chords like sevenths or ninths. And I won't designate a total number of chords, I'll just see where it takes me. I'll start with a simple C major chord. From there, I'll hold the C and go to A flat major. Then I'll hold the E flat and A flat and move to an E flat sus4 chord that then resolves to E flat major. Using the sus4 chord temporarily creates an additional common tone between chords. From this E flat major chord, I'll hold the B flat and move to a B flat minor chord. I like B flat minor here instead of B flat major, although both would work. Then I'll hold the D flat and F and move to D flat major. Then I can do another one of these sus4 chords, this time resolving to A flat minor instead of A flat major. Sometimes just switching a chord from major to minor or vice versa subverts expectations just a bit and makes things more interesting. Here's an interesting one. I'm sticking with this suspended note that resolves down. Although this time I'm treating the seventh scale degree, that D sharp, which was carried over from the last chord, as a suspended tone that resolves down to the C sharp. Normally the seventh scale degree doesn't resolve down to a sixth scale degree, but I think it kind of works in this situation, especially if I use the sixth scale degree to move to an F sharp major chord. any point here I could have gone a different route completely. For instance, maybe instead of going to this A flat chord, I could instead go to a G flat minor 6 chord, then carry the G flat and D flat over to a D flat sus, resolving to a D flat minor chord, then carry the D flat to an E flat 7 chord, then carry over the E flat and G to a C minor chord. To me, both of these progressions work well, and it just goes to show that at any point you could go a completely different direction and make a successful chord progression. I'll start back at the C major chord. This time I'll try to use a more complex harmonic structure, that is, chords that have more extended notes, and I'll use those extended notes to connect chords. All right, so from this C major chord, I could hold the G and move to an A flat minor chord with a major seven, 
Then using a similar descending resolution concept from the above progression, I'll move the seventh scale degree down to the sixth. Next, I'll use the A flat and F from the A flat minor sixth chord and move to an F sharp minor chord with a major seventh and ninth added. From there, I'll continue this downward suspending concept, this time treating that E sharp as the sharp four in a B major chord. That sharp four will resolve down again to the major third. Then I'll use the D sharp, which is enharmonically an E flat to move to an E flat major chord. I'll then add in the major seventh and use it to move chromatically downward to a D flat chord with a seventh and ninth added in. The seventh and ninth are the common tones shared from the previous chord. I really like the sound of those two chords, the E flat major to D flat nine chord. So I'll go back to the E flat chord, but this time use the G from that chord to move to an A seven chord. The G is now the seventh scale degree in A. All right, let's hear how this all sounds together. So I know that I went through that last progression fairly quickly, and you might be wondering how I made each decision along the way. Other than using the common tone principle, I was also consciously thinking of voice leading in the progression itself. Here's a basic piano voicing of this progression, incorporating my descending voice leading idea. Just look at the top line alone, you can see that it just descends either by whole or half step. I use this to guide my chord choice, obviously in combination with common tones, and most importantly, this isn't a melody or anything. It's just simply me thinking about chords that have a forward direction. Voice leading is one of the most important aspects to motion and creating a sense of narrative in your music. I'll be making another video shortly on how I come up with piano voicings for a chord progression like this, focusing specifically on inversions and voice leading. It's a really important step, and it can be very useful before you write melodies over the chords. So stay tuned for that one. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.